Would you like to 10X your productivity and stop feeling so overworked and overwhelmed? Welcome to the Extreme Productivity Podcast with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm Kevin Cruz and I am killing it so far today. It's about 11 a.m. right now as I'm recording this. I already did my morning routine. I worked on my MIT, which is my new book proposal. I can't talk about it too much, but I'm just about done with the proposal. I even did some planning for a huge epic vacation to Italy this summer. Uh, I'm going, it's just a father-daughter trip. Each of my kids, when they turn 16, I tell them I'll take them anywhere they want around the world just to create one awesome memory um, before before they go off to college and forget about uh, good old dad. Uh, so I've been working on the Italy trip and I just got this new podcast review from Susan who goes by Smartin74 and she says this is a great podcast that works and she emailed me to let me know that um, she left that message up on iTunes. So I mailed her out a 1440 t-shirt and book and some other goodies. And if you want a care package from me, just go onto iTunes, leave an honest review on the Extreme Productivity Podcast with Kevin Cruz and email me at info at kevincruz.com and I'll ship you out some goodies, whatever I got lying around. Can't guarantee exactly what will be left, but I'm sure you'll like it. So On that note, remember last episode, I gave you five ways to sleep better tonight immediately. And in this episode, it's a little different. I'm going to share my extreme body experiment with cryotherapy. That's that it's getting really popular. It's very trendy. Uh, You know, you're in trouble because it's like all the Hollywood people are doing it. All the professional athletes are doing it and you basically freeze your body. But before I tell you this crazy story, wouldn't you like to design your day just like self-made millionaires and other ultra high achievers do? I have a free one page planning tool that you can use to schedule your day just like that. All you need to do is text the word achieve to 44222 or just open up your web browser and visit wwwproductivity podcast.com. All right. So we know this show is all about productivity and I often say energy is everything. So I tried out something just recently, turned myself into a guinea pig for you so I can tell you about it. All right. Cryotherapy. Picture this. I'm standing naked except for my boxer shorts are on and I'm staring at the cryotherapy chamber that's about to engulf me in sub-freezing liquid nitrogen. I am terrified. In fact, this is no joke. I can't remember the last time I've been this scared. I mean, I hate jumping into a cold swimming pool. I hate coming out of a cold swimming pool. You know, to put my body into this freezing chamber, uh, I'm not looking forward to it. And... There's a young woman, 20-something years old, standing next to me. Again, I'm standing there in my boxer shorts. She gives me two socks, two gloves to put on, and she says, these will keep you from getting frostbit. It's important that you keep them on. Right about then, I'm thinking, should I get a third sock? (laughs) I walk into the chamber. She closes me up, seals me in, and it's kind of like I'm standing in an upright tanning bed with my head poking out the top. I, of course, immediately assume the fig leaf position, still scared, and like Talking Heads frontman David Byrne, I wonder, well, how did I get here? So I first heard about whole body cryotherapy, WBC, when I was hanging out with some U.S. Navy SEALs in San Diego. This was several years ago, a lot of years ago, and they told me that some rich private business dude... Uh, bought some of these chambers, these cryogenic chambers uh, from Japan where they originated and shipped them in so that the SEALs could experiment with using them to speed up their recovery uh, time from injuries. And that definitely sounded like voodoo to me. 
Now, the second time I heard about cryotherapy was when Tony Robbins in an interview mentioned that he has one in each of his homes, and every morning he starts by deep freezing his body in the chamber. He says it shocks the system, cures inflammation, cures arthritis. So I thought that was interesting, uh, but I was still fairly skeptical. And then the third time I saw a cryotherapy chamber was just recently. It was uh, episode nine of the HBO show Billions. Great show if you haven't watched it. Really like that show a lot. Great actors in it. And so, hey, if um, a fictional hedge fund billionaire played by Damian Lewis is doing cryotherapy, what the heck? It's about time I try this thing. So I wasn't completely dumb. I you know did a little bit of research first. And it's true that there's all kinds of remarkable claims that you'll find when you go to the website or look at the brochures of the manufacturers of these tanks. Apparently, freezing your body helps you to lose weight, tighten skin, relieve muscle pain, boost the immune system, and improve sleep quality. People said you will feel an energy boost immediately upon after cryotherapy. Now, of course, there doesn't seem to be any proof behind uh, most of these claims. I'm kind of surprised that they're allowed to make these claims. Now, I did do some research into the clinical studies around it, and it's mixed. There are some studies that show cryotherapy does nothing. But there are many studies that show that uh, you know, using split A-B testing, groups of athletes and, and people who do workouts, those that do the cryotherapy afterwards, there are there is a reduction in the um, in inflammation markers, the cell signaling proteins like TNF alpha that cause inflammation. I also learned that people like LeBron James and Floyd Mayweather Jr. and many professional athletes are now using cryotherapy chambers instead of those old fashioned ice baths. Then I also learned that a 24 year old woman in Las Vegas froze herself to death last year. Apparently, she climbed in uh, unattended, and I don't know what happened. Maybe she passed out or something, but it froze her to death. There was no no attendant there to, to help her. So that is how I end up in the cryo chamber. It takes about 30 seconds to reach its maximum cold point. Nitrogen gas is swirling around my body and pours out around my face and head through the top. So I ask the attendant how cold it is. You hit negative 186 Celsius, she answered. Now, that didn't seem right to me. So all the articles I've read about it, they talk about typical temperatures are between negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit to a maximum of negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit. But 186 Celsius is actually 303, negative 303 Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. So she said I was <laughs> negative 300 Fahrenheit. That's much colder than I had read about in any of my research. Are you sure? I asked her. So she looks at the panel, says, I'm sure that's what it's reading. Now, I don't know if she meant Fahrenheit instead of Celsius, but either way, it is dang cold. The cryotherapy chamber freezes you or is at a temperature that's colder than any temperature recorded on earth in a natural setting. So um, I ask her, I'm like, <laughs> if it's that cold, you know, how come it's not actually freezing me, freezing my body? How come it's not killing me? She says, it's a dry cold, <laughs> which, you know, sounds ridiculous. And I don't think she really had any idea, you know, why it isn't freezing me. And I still don't know why it doesn't freeze you. So Anyway, after one minute in the tank, I'm thinking, I mean, it's cold, but I'm thinking this isn't too bad. Now it's after about the second minute in the tank, you know, my body's definitely shivering and it's kind of like at that point, you know, imagine, you know, running outside in your underwear in the middle of the night during winter, you know, with a snowstorm, not that I've ever actually done that, but that's pretty much what I think it feels like. And my fingers are beginning to get numb. So I start wiggling them around, doing jazz hands down by my waist. Now we're into the third minute and it is getting a bit harder. It's very uncomfortable. It's not so much cold. It's more like, and it is nothing at all like being in a cold swimming pool. It's almost more like a burning sensation on your skin. It just feels uncomfortable. It hurts a little. So I started a breathing meditation to keep my mind off of the cold. Your mind can only do one thing at a time and pain 
occurs in the mind. It doesn't matter where you think you're feeling it. You know, the nerves just send a signal and it's your brain that's telling you something hurts. So, you know, if you're <laughs> sitting in a dentist chair, or getting a blood draw or whatever it is, and, and it's bothering you, you're getting ready to get a shot, just start to breathe and focus on your breaths. And it's going to be, it's going to help with your fear or the pain or the discomfort that you're feeling. Anyway, next thing I know, the attendant says, that's three minutes, shuts the thing off and opens the door and all this nitrogen gas goes flooding from the chamber out into the room, just kind of disappears. And so I step out and I start to get dressed. And again, it's weird. It's not like coming out of a swimming pool where you're shivering, you're freezing. I mean, it's almost immediately I feel just the room temperature and by the time I get dressed and, you know, walk up the stairs, then out to my car, I mean, I didn't feel cold at all. It didn't linger. But I also have to say, unfortunately, I didn't feel any different. Um, I didn't I didn't even feel that energy rush that so many people claim they get after cryotherapy. Um, I made sure before I got into the tank, I was very aware of how my body felt. And I had just done a big workout the day before. So I had muscle pains, my carpal tunnel syndrome in my right wrist was acting up. Um, y- y- you know, I, it, I knew what hurt and I kind of took stock as I was walking back to my car in the parking lot. All the same pains were there. Nothing felt like it had disappeared or gone away. And that night, I don't think I slept any better or worse than any other night. So I'm actually disappointed because even though I was skeptical, I mean, I wanted cryotherapy to work and I know about the placebo effect and I'm sure that a lot of people who do cryotherapy, it's got to be the placebo effect. I mean, in most pharmaceutical drugs, they get about a 30% cure rate from placebo effect. So that's a lot of people. And I don't care what the effect is. I'll take the placebo effect if it's going (laughs) to give me more energy uh, and make pain go away. But it didn't do that for me. Now, the jury's still out. I mean, and I would try it again. As I talk to some more people about this, now they say, oh, well, you know, you need to, uh, if you do a workout, you need to do cryotherapy immediately afterwards because the inflammation had already happened in you. That's why your pains are still there. And then other people said, oh, you know, you need to do it daily or three times a week to really turn off those signals over time. You know, everybody's got a reason why it did nothing for me after one attempt. And so maybe I would try it again. Um, But my report is this extreme therapy to get you energy and sleep and to make your aches and pains go away. Eh, you know, there's not a lot of research on it. Didn't work for me. I certainly am not going to be recommending it to other people. So what can you take away from this? Well, again, if you want to try it, go for it. I don't think it's, it, it's not real cold or painful. I think it's safe if you're going to a spa and there's a, an attendant there or whatever. But I also will tell you that there is a similar tactic out there available to you right now that clinical research really does indicate will increase dopamine in the mesocorticolimbic pathway whatever the heck that is, I'm just reading words, which will result in an instant mood boost, mental clarity, and alertness. In fact, indeed, there is a scientific case for why you should be taking cold showers. (laughs) I'm not doing them myself, at least not yet, but I actually think you will get an immediate body response and mental boost if you want to plunge yourself into an ice cold shower. I know a lot of people do it. So that's what I would recommend you take away with for now. All right. Before you go out there and seize the day, and I know you will, make sure you've subscribed to this podcast in iTunes or Stitcher. And please leave me a review. And this way, more people will discover the podcast. And once you're subscribed, you won't miss the next episode, which I'm going to explain seven ways that I say no to all the people who want phone calls and cup of coffees and get to know you meetings with me and all that kind of stuff. There's ways I say no so that I don't sound like a jerk. You need to say no more often to protect your time. So I look forward to uh, speaking with you on the next episode and in the comments and on social media everywhere. Until next week, remember, master your minutes to master your life.